Hey guys, my name is Amanda and so today I'm going to talk about my VCU Arts portfolio and I'm going to go through each image and tell you how I named it, the idea behind the photo, who's in the photo, and um, just kind of the overall idea of what was going through my head while taking these images. For this video, I'm going to be looking on my laptop and talking about them. So if I keep looking down, it's because I'm trying to get details from the photos without just like thinking about them. So just keep that in mind. I hope it gives you some insight to how an art student who got into the program compiled their portfolio to submit it. When you sequence your photos, you're supposed to put your worst photo first and then your best photo last. You want to show progression through the year that you've been taking photos and how you've improved with your technique, with your camera, with your model, anything that can show people who are reviewing you for admission. First image, it's called Girl in the Garden and it is of a girl named Lizzie. We decided to go to the U.S. Botanical Garden which is in D.C. We were just walking around, it's a very big facility, and I found this one spot that I really liked where you could sit on this ledge and all of the greenery was behind you. So I asked her to sit on the ledge and do this kind of like weird one leg up pose. Um, and I wanted just like a plain facial expression so I could really focus on the green colors behind her. And I'm really glad that she wore an outfit that was very simple with the colors so it didn't distract from all the leaves in the background and then on her shoe there is a little strip of green at the heel which is nice because then it brings everything kind of around in a circle it was shot on my first camera which is the Canon Rebel T3i so once we get further into the photos at the end of my series, you can definitely see a difference in quality with the cameras that I flipped over to. My second image is of this girl named Zoe. I named this photo Dipped in Gold because obviously I drenched her in glitter. And for this, we actually used studio lighting, which I'm not very familiar with. Um, I usually like to shoot in natural light, but for this, I saw a video of a Victoria's Secret model rolling around naked in glitter, so I kind of wanted to recreate it, and this is what I came up with. Bought a bunch of glitter from a craft store, and then I sprayed, I think, bug spray or like some like sticky spray on her chest and on like her arms and like right here to highlight. So the um, glitter would stick and I really like this because it shows that I can work with studio lighting with the background with props so this third photo is also of Zoe and I named it fashion forward because I thought this shot was very editorial to me at the time I was very young so I was like oh my gosh this is awesome I love shooting on stairs because I think it gives the model a wide variety of poses and um, you can use them in many different ways. Um, I like this shot because the color in this is just her shoes. She's like gazing into the camera but you're also kind of just like going from her face down to her orange open-toed shoe. And I like how her pose is kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, like in. Um, she's really using the whole space of the staircase that kind of rhymed so um i really like this shot and so far all three of these images have been on my old camera for my fourth photo i chose to name this one blur because as you see it is a long exposure and my friend allison is whipping her hair when you can see it like you can see the motion of it I chose this image because I wanted to show the people who are reviewing my application that I know how to work the functions of my camera. And I wanted to put this in black and white because I also wanted to show that I know how to color my images black and white 
using good contrast, good lighting, and um, I just didn't have any other black and white images in my portfolio, so I wanted to show a little bit of variety. My fifth image is called It Kills, and it's of a guy named Adam. He's the only male in my portfolio that I took pictures of. I chose this image because, like the previous one where I did a long exposure, um, I'm also doing the same thing here with him smoking his cigarette. His outfit is very um, neutral colors, so you can really focus on like the white smoke and his orange hair, which I like very much. For my sixth image, this one is of a girl named Christina, and I named this Red and Black because she is wearing black and her hair is red. Her family generously allowed us to go up to her apartment in Rosalind and take this picture with the buildings in the background. She's also wearing a neutral outfit like the one previous, and you can really focus on, again, the color of her hair, which is, again, red. I just liked this because it was like a very simple shot. Nothing's really happening except you see like the blur in the background and um, that's also another function in your camera is to learn how to blur the background, use your depth of field, so I wanted to include that in my series. My seventh image, this is of a girl named Diana and I named it 70s because that is the vibe that I was going for for this picture with her outfit and the background and the colors. She wore a red shirt and dark jeans. So in this image, you can see that I altered her red shirt to go to orange, her dark jeans to go to light jeans, and her glasses were also purple and I changed them to like a teal color. Um, I wanted to show that I know how to select parts of the image and alter them in Photoshop. My eighth image is where I transition from the Canon T3i to my Mark 5D2. If you go back and forth between my last image and this image now, you can kind of see like the quality bumped up a little bit. For my eighth image, it's of a girl named Allison, and this was shot at the National Portrait Gallery in DC, and I named this one Pure because the colors are very neutral, and the look of her eyes going upward, you can really just see like the whites of her eyes and how beautiful and simple everything is, so I just named it Pure because it's very... That's the vibe that I got from it. Um, I liked this shot because, as you can tell from my photos, I like neutral clothing and kind of a simple background with a pop of color. So you can see she's wearing just a gray dress with the greens popping out from the corners. And I like how she's looking up because you can really see in her eyes how clear and um, beautiful they are. My ninth picture is also of Zoe. <laughs> she is a constant model for all of my images. I named this image Winter because we took this during the winter. I liked this shot because the snow is reflecting onto her face. You can really see the detail in her eyebrows, in her lips, in her eyes, the texture of her hair. So I wanted to add um, a very detailed shot into my portfolio. For my 10th image, it's of a girl named Robbie. I named it Shop Till You Drop because she is in a shopping cart and I just thought it'd be a little punny to add that as my title. But we were on the rooftop, no one was there, no cars were there except this shopping cart. I asked her if she could get in it because when am I going to have another chance to take pictures in a shopping cart, let alone put it in my portfolio. I like this a lot because you have the red lip, the red bar, and then you have a little bit of red like poking out from her side, which is nice. And then everything else is kind of like neutral colors, like her white shirt with her white nails, and then her gray boots with kind of like the gray cement in the background. And then her face is looking directly in the camera, which I like because it it gives kind of a like staring into the soul 
kind of vibe. My 11th photo is of a girl named Lucy. I didn't have any pictures before with people wearing sunglasses, so I named this one Shady, which I thought was so clever of me. I asked to put on some of my sunglasses to kind of give her like a hidden identity. As you can see like the blur of her hands, like fixing her hair, but also like it's super sharp um, right where her chin and mouth is. And this is when I started to really like edit skin and understand how to make that look natural. So um, I wanted to incorporate that. I learned how to um, properly edit skin. My 12th image, this is of a girl named Hannah and I named it Can You Dig It? because on her shirt it says the same thing, Can You Dig It? We drove about 45 minutes to an hour to this railroad track that I found. Below her waist the image is blurred and from the bottom up everything is very crisp but also the background is um, blurred as well so I definitely showed technique of how I can bring the model and select what part of her I wanted to be in focus. You can see that I enhance the colors and the contrast to show that I am experimenting with hues and the saturation in my photos. For my 13th image, this is of a girl named Emma and I named it Surfaced because she is in a bath of milk and it kind of looks like she's floating on top of it or like coming to the surface. The only thing you can really focus on is like her eyes and then her bright colored lip. We chose to do a black bathing suit or bandeau because then if she was wearing like a floral or like colorful one, it would kind of distract from what we were going for which was focusing on um, just her face. For my 14th image, this is of a girl named Jenkins and I named this image Lost in Her Eyes because honestly, every time I look at this picture, I just go straight to her eyes. They are so bright and so beautiful. And even though there's a bunch of um, lavender in front of her face and it's everywhere, I still go directly to her eyes. This vision of wanting to go to a lavender field or some type of flower field and take pictures in it of about I want to say an hour and a half to this random lavender field that I've never been to. I blurred some of the lavender in front and then close to her face. I didn't blur it. I obviously lightened up her eyes so I wanted to show that I could really bring in this image with a bunch of light. And then for my last image, I have no idea who this is. This is a stranger that I came up to when I was in Georgetown one day. I named this one Pink because as you can see, every element in this picture, there is pink to it. Her lips, her hair, the flowers in the back. I, I, did, I didn't know how to approach a stranger, I didn't know how to ask, but I knew if I had walked away and didn't ask her for her picture, I would regret it later. I blurred the flowers in the background so you could really focus on like who she is because we don't know and I want to figure it out. I think it's my strongest, so I put it as my last image in my series. But that is my whole portfolio. I did 15 images out of 16 and was very nervous to submit this because story time. There are days called portfolio days where you can go to the school that you are applying to and show um, faculty or previous students your portfolio or what you have of it so far and they can give you feedback of maybe what other elements you should add um, other concepts you should think about, um, just maybe changing the order of your photos, just any tips before actually submitting your final product. I walked up to this lady because she called my name and I would swipe and show her all the images that I had and uh, I said, so um, what do you think, what's your feedback, um, like I'm really nervous and this is my top school I want to get into. Keep in mind the school that I was visiting was VCU which I'm in right now and right off the bat she said I don't think you'll get in with this portfolio and I was so shocked I I didn't understand why I didn't understand like if my images were bad and she said 
all of these pictures are the same. To me, that didn't make any sense because every image in my portfolio was different. Every background was different. Every clothing choice was different. Every model was mostly different because <laughs> I used Zoe three other times. But um, basically, I thought out each image differently than the next, so I was very confused why this woman thought so. I submitted my portfolio and I got a letter in the mail that said I got in and I was, I cried. I was so happy that the department thought that I was good enough to be a part of their program. For that year, the acceptance rate for the art program was 16%. But moral of the story is if you go to portfolio day and a teacher or an alumni tells you that you're not gonna get if you think that your image is good enough to be submitted don't change it because some random person is telling you to i hope you guys enjoyed this video i post a lot about photography and fashion and school subscribe comment down below give it a like tell me if you didn't like it hope it was helpful and informational and i will see you next time